Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Anime on Draft, episode, what is it? 41. 41. 41. As you can tell, those are my lovely co-hosts, Alec. The originals. Drew. I'm part of that. Yeah. Okay, that was a very <laughs> delayed response. And Mark. Hey, what's up? And uh, I'm your host this week, Rolando. Sick. And so we're going to get right into it. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. So this week we have two beers because of a clerical error. So uh, Mark, you want to start us off with this and uh, let us know what the reasoning behind all this How is? You fucked up. Yeah, there was a, there was a little bit of a mix up on my part. Uh, I wanted to do a seasonal beer. And I kind of forgot how far away Drew is. And since we're basically NorCal and SoCal, it's like basically two different states. Um, so I, I chose My Bloody Valentine from Alesmith. And I had looked it up and I saw that there was some at some BevMo's near Drew, <laughs> but apparently didn't have them there. So I chose a backup that Drew was able to get, which was the Port Brewing Shark Attack, which is a uh, <clears throat> another um, red ale that I've had before which is pretty good. So I figured that would be a good backup. So I think it made we'll... me sad. I wanted to drink that one that you picked, but they don't have ale Smith stuff up here. Unfortunately, wow. you made you kind of cool. emo, huh? I'm sad. <laughs> He's feeling I just want to say, I wished that this was a Saison. So I could say that this was a Saison beer. Get it? Seasonal. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, is it really, hey. a, is it really a joke when like, Saison yeah. already means season in like French. Yeah, but it's English. <laughs> it's because he forced it. It's an English joke. It's an English joke. Okay. All right. You know what, guys? You just don't understand English. the <laughs> quality puns. Poor right? punnage. I'm oh, out of yeah. here. I'm over this shit. I quit. <laughs> so uh, mo moving on, um, we'll also be covering episode 18 of Ancient Majesty's Bride and episode five of Violet Evergarden, and then a couple of new segments that you may all be interested in. So look forward to our happy hour. But first, let's start off with the beer in our pairing. So um, I don't know what the hell that noise was, but it was weird. Um, so the Stop. Ale Smith Brewing My Bloody Valentine. Let's start off with it. There are it's three dark. of us that have it. It's pretty dark. It's got a nice like reddish tinge to it, though. When you bring it up to light. Yeah. yeah. So to be honest, or when I bottom. had seen pictures of this, maybe it was just like photoshopped or something. I thought it was like red, red. Like uh, I thought it was like almost dyed or something. Yeah. So I was a little bit scared, but it, it had pretty decent reviews. So I saw the pictures too. I know what you're talking about. It. It might. It might. Was it the pictures from Alesmith? Yeah. Yeah. That's the way it yeah. worried me as well of the pic of the pictures <laughs> of it. It kind of looked yeah, like the. Uh, uh, it kind of scared me for a second, but I mean, I saw elsewhere that it was rated to be pretty, pretty decent. So I mean, ooh, you're cheating there. Looking at other what? ratings before giving your wow, own, it's going to oh, influence you. God. It's going to skew you. It's oh, going to skew, no. skew you. Well, it's new, so like I had like searched it and I was like, oh, oh all right, people no, are saying it's good. Oh no! Wow, dude. All right. Wow. <laughs> so um, <laughs> biased. Throw it out. He's biased. Everyone, just go find something in your fridge. Let's do this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fucking um, the, amateurs. I thought that the beer was going to look similar to that uh, Red Velvet Nitro from yeah. Ballast Point. But it is actually just way darker. It's very cloudy, dark red. Yeah. It's like. It's like cherry red. Yeah. Um, the head is kind of mahogany. Left a small layer that's been here for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My head has definitely stayed for pretty good minute yeah it sits there it's, it's a nice uh, color it's a good contrast it's pretty good doesn't make it look like red piss water <laughs> <laughs> it's not Which as I hoppy as i be. thought it was gonna be yeah especially being a red it ale smells really hoppy to be quite honest it doesn't i don't know it doesn't seem like a holy like red ale it, it almost seems like you don't 
get that like what it's supposed to be related to the the dead red yeah the evil i dead. feel like it's not as yeah i feel like it's not as bitter as that one i feel no. like this one's got like a little it's a little bit sweeter it's supposed to have like chocolate and toffee in it so i'm yeah. sure that's uh like kind of balancing out the bitter notes of the hops let's see i have the bottle in I front of me the hops bitter sweet chocolate hops. caramel and toast okay I'm, there's no toffee <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I don't really taste, taste toffee. <laughs> I thought I read toffee on the bottle. That was wrong. Maybe the flavor combination of bittersweet and chocolate and caramel made you think of toffee. It's kind of like, I don't know, I don't know <clears throat> ingredients in toffee, sugar. I get something. toast and I get hops. I get I get For slight me. toast. I don't get a lot of it. I don't really get anything else. I get kind of more of that chocolate and hops flavor mm. probably more caramel than chocolate that's what i was thinking i, I, I definitely feel that i taste that caramel flavor uh, right there at the finish the yeah it's at the very end um or like on the edges of your tongue or something mm. what, what's the, the center ABV? of mine is a 6.6 6.6 uh, 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. oh 6.66 6. 6. 6. 6. Mm-hmm. 6. yep that's on yeah. purpose that's what it says on their website mm. mm-hmm it's not as a, uh, I don't know, the the combination of flavors just kind of make it not stand out. Like nothing really stands out to me. Yeah, I could see that. Like it's it's just like a very standard beer. Um, it's not like amazing. It's not like a really like kind of bitter like harsh red that I'm used to. Like I'm I'm used to like those reds that kind of have that like um, that hot. Kind of hoppy punch. finish, yeah, yeah, that like really hoppy finish that I don't almost like kind of sting the tongue, and I kind of like that. It's I like that in reds, but this yeah. one is just uh, very mellow. What do you think, Alec, as a more, <clears throat> I guess, Belgian and stout guy? What uh, what do you think about the the hoppiness, the bitterness of this one? To me, it's pretty hoppy. Um, it's a little hoppier than I anticipated. I guess uh, it it kind of reminds me more of a pale ale in that way than a, than a red ale, but um, it's not bad. Um, it might also be that I drank an IPA before this. And so my taste buds are just kind of shot because on it, I bought a, I bought a Kona 12 pack and I'm just trying to get rid of the IPAs first. Oh, Kona IPAs I want are good, good stuff though. later. Yeah. They're not bad, which is why I was like, okay, I can drink these, but um, I do get the caramel as an aftertaste and I get the toast kind of mixed in with the, the hops. But for me, it's a lot of hops with that kind of caramel finish. And that's, that's kind of what I get. Um, well, since we're yeah. going on that, what, what rating would you give the beer? Um, I'm trying to think of like other red ales I've had. Um, now I'm Googling red ales. <laughs> we had a red ale on the show before, didn't we? Um, I'm trying to remember which one it was. Um, yeah, it was. I know we've had at least one. I know we've had at least one. Um, I'm just blanking right. on. You've yeah. had the Kona Red Ale. They have the Fire Fire Rock something. Fire Rock's a pale ale. But we didn't have that on the show, did we? No, no. not on the show. No, but Fire Rock is a pale ale. They, yeah, they do have a, a red ale, don't they? I don't know. I think actually. that's just a pale mm-hmm. ale. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a red ale in their, in their seasonal pack or it another seasonal the variety pack. Lava man red ale. Um, it is not in their not seasonal that. variety that pack. That sounds dope though. Yeah. Yeah. Lava mm-hmm. man. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so rating wise though, I think, uh, it's not bad. It's a little hoppy for my taste. Just, I mean, it's, I, like I said, it could be that I had that. IPA before and it just kind of shot my taste buds for today but um I uh, I think it deserves a, like a 3.5. I think that's a solid rating. It's got it's solid. It's got good color. It I mean the smell of hops is always awesome. So, it smells good. Um and then the caramel finish is actually pretty nice. So, 3.5. Okay, 3.5. Uh Mark <clears throat> as the chooser of the beer, um sure. what are your overall thoughts and then give us your rating? Um, I think it's, it's a good, it's, it's like a, a little bit sweeter. Sorry. 
It's a little bit sweeter than I kind of was expecting it to be, but I guess maybe that's the purpose of it being a seasonal Valentine beer. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I, I think it's it kind of drops the score down a little bit for me and as like a fan of like red ales. Um, but I, I think it's still a very solid beer. Uh, I, I like that sweetness too, though, but it, it it's not exactly what I was expecting. Um, so maybe I'll give it like a 3.75. Okay. Um, for me, it I kind of don't know what the beer is doing. I know like I, their goal in general was probably to have a bittersweet beer because they're particularly pointing at the fact that Valentine's Day is SAD sad or single awareness day. Uh, sad. Obviously sad. Um, <laughs> and so it's supposed to be like bittersweet. So I see they're taking a normally bitter red ale and incorporating sweet elements into it. Um, excuse me. Um, and it kind of just nullifies the sweetness and the bitterness. So I don't get too much of either there's definitely like a slightly bitter aftertaste which i guess is supposed to be like the bitter sweetness of it sure like it does its job but i'm not sure that it's something that i would just you know pick up and drink all the time <laughs> it's like okay um i would probably say i'd give it a 3.5 just because it's not like it's not a bad beer but it's not a great beer. It's just kind of average. So, yeah, um, I can see what they're can trying I read to do. The back? It doesn't excel in anything in particular. The back is kind of cool. Can I read it? Yeah. <laughs> it says, "Don't spend this single awareness day alone. Grab a beer. This red-blooded cousin of Evil Dead Red Ale, our Halloween brew, is a beautiful crimson color, notes of caramel, toast, and bittersweet chocolate." Balance an intest, inte, intest, <laughs> intense bouquet of floral hop aromas that we know you'll fall in love with. The finish leaves a pleasant, full body sweetness on the palate that won't spread angry rumors about you to all the you to all your friends. Wow, I can't read today. To all your friends, it's like, like me that one trying time, to read. <laughs> that won't spread angry rumors about you to all your friends, like that one time when I was oh, a uh, happy Valentine's Day, <laughs> and then. Pair this beer with Jilted Lovers reservations for one on your favorite emo album Ooh. or your favorite emo album. God, my chemical <laughs> Serving romance, a pint right? at 45 to 53 at www.alesmith.com. <laughs> um, there we go. All right. Well, despite the butchering of it, it's actually kind of funny when you read it the first it's time. So it's beautiful. like chuckle oval. Oh, so, beautiful. so my bloody Valentine in season for Valentine's Day average rating around a 3.5 so uh yeah why don't we move on to the port brewing shark attack we've got two oh, of you drinking these mark it tastes like port wine i uh, yeah, cleanse my palate good luck mark <laughs> a uh, good jalapeno luck. <laughs> kettle kettle chip so, uh, <laughs> so let's uh <laughs> it'll work it dude work. it's fine it's fine yeah, you just that, do that, that with a, a little water flavor <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll cut it and then and then you just you rinse it out with a little water and then boom you're ready to go you just need yeah. something that'll wash like cheese its are the best because they work with everything so it won't change the flavor of the beer too much. Definitely so. shock the palate, that's for sure. Yeah, dude, shock it. Like, shock it. Um, yeah, shock it. So first impressions, uh, <laughs> it's it's like a nice like a uh, hazily brown, I guess. Mm. Kind of mm. amber color to to mine. Um the head on mine kind of dissipated pretty quickly, but it could be cuz I I poured it up, poured them both out at the same time and you know, I didn't drink <laughs> The Mine's uh, kind of hanging around a little bit. It's like a thin layer, but the legs on it are really good. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, same here. Like the whole. Did you pour glass robustly? Is, like, covered. I did pour robustly, but mm. definitely have good legs on it. But yeah. like I said, the head kind of dissipated a little bit. How's the mouth? It's feel? good. It's good though. It tastes. It tastes like a red ale. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, this is good. Like, this is a really solid red ale. This is what I expect from having that kind of, like, hoppy finish to it. Well, and this is a double red ale, um, so mm. I'm guessing extra hoppiness in this guy. But it's good. I It's drinkable. Um, no bad aftertaste for me. Um, yeah, it's, it tastes like, to me, it tastes like a stronger version of, like, a Newcastle almost. Um I can regular see that. Newcastle, right? Yeah, regular regular like that, Newcastle, like, not not blue. Jesus Christ, blue or <laughs> yellow. 
So like how like Newcastle has that kind of like caramely like sweet finish to it, but this is like a little bit stronger than that. Yeah, I feel like this is a better version of the bloody Valentine. Not gonna lie. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you guys are you guys are describing it, and you're like asking for like everything that this beer has, and I'm like, I'm sad you guys aren't drinking this beer because I think you would like it. (laughs) Yeah, because this actually (laughs) this this has it all, man. Mm -hmm. It's got it. Yeah, it's very good. clean, good finish, drinkable, uh, bitter but not too bitter, excellent aroma, um, great color. Um, what would you rate it's it? good. What would I what? Rate it. What would I rate it? Um, yeah, rate it. Rate it right now. Let's let's give this thing a, a four for me. It's, it's good, super drinkable. Um, doesn't make like a super lasting impression, but I would buy it again. Um, and I also like the uh, the uh, bottle art. It's like a dude who's going surfing and there's sharks under him. Uh, nice. And he looks like a seal. And so they're, they're going to wow, eat him. Go, go figure. Wow. Are sharks you saying attack? he looks like seal and that's why sharks are attacking him? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, By the dude. way, do you guys want to know why Newcastle has that caramely flavor? Why is that? Car- carcinogens. I was going to say oh. GMOs. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Even better. Mm. <laughs> no so, by the state of California to cause super cancer. Oh, love it. <laughs> Mark. Super cancer. Um, I'm gonna give this one a four. This is a little bit better than my bloody Valentine. Uh it's sweet enough that it doesn't kind of have that like weird, like I don't know, lingering sweetness that's kind of finished with the hops. Like I feel like this kind of is balanced really nicely. Um Plus, it's got a lot of that hoppy, like, sharp taste at the very end that I really like from, like, Red Ales. So, yeah, I'm going to give this one a solid four. Also, watch out, Mark. This is 9.0%. Ooh. So, uh, wow. good luck drinking both Good of those, luck, guy. Mark. Good luck. <laughs> Let's hope I make You're it to the end of the show. You're going to be messed up by the end of this episode. Oh, man. <laughs> so, oh, um, God. Now that we've wrapped up the beers, why don't we move on to the second part of our pairing, Ancient Magus Bride, yep. episode 18. Forgive and forget. So, in this episode, there are a couple topics that I kind of want to cover. So, the first topic I want to go about is communication in general throughout the episode. In particular, um, two things. So, there's Stella's quote. Words aren't for understanding each other. They're for talking to one another. So, this um, topic, uh, Alec, let's start with you. Oh, okay. Um, so this topic, words aren't for understanding each other. They're for talking to one another. It plays a big part throughout the episode. What do you think? Um, like, how do you think this plays into the later part of the episode where there's the whole deal with Elias and his jealousy and she say, um, yeah, so I definitely, um, think that her 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 quote played an impact in how Chise um, kind of dealt with Elias when he was having his tantrum. Um, I think that that wisdom is why the roles kind of reversed in this episode. We we see like Ruth says it, and so you don't really have to interpret the show to see it. He just straight up says it. For a while, it seemed like he was the father and she was a daughter. And now it seems like he's a kid's son and she's the mom. And so I think her making this friend, Stella, who's kind of, you know, younger. she's 10 <laughs> and she's, she's younger and more mature than she say. And, mm-hmm. um, and she, you know, she learns from the experience cause she hasn't had many friends. She hasn't had many role models. She's been kind of running around on her own for a while. <clears throat> um, but she takes that and remembers what her mom would have done. And, 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 uses it to basically calm him down with her actions rather than trying to like, like she uses her words too, but she uses her actions to make Elias understand how she's feeling because she's understanding how he's feeling by his actions. And so um, I think that the, it, the quote was kind of a build up to her diffusing that situation. So it was, and they overall, stay true to it. Overall, also, you know, tying into what we discover with her magic later <clears throat> in the episode, right? Later in the show, mm-hmm. um, Mark, do you want to? Which talk I about that? found kind of ironic. I just want to throw out where they, 
they had the whole episode about um be careful what you say your words are power and then she goes and she goes and does that so yeah. she does something so simple like singing a lullaby and it's yeah. just has some like odd repercussions that she had no idea yeah. which i mean i i guess that's a really good like foreshadowing probably ash and i had some idea you know as to what she say like how powerful she is mm-hmm. so maybe that could be it but i mean i definitely think that there's like a lot of like foreshadowing that happens um but um yeah i mean i i completely agree like with what you said that she definitely like had to learn and kind of like take a step back and like learn from this younger girl <laughs> about like relationships in that sense uh <clears throat> but yeah like i mean like yeah i completely agree i uh, i just wanted to say that i love ruth and silky in this episode oh, uh, dude. Uh, so so when, when silky rubs his head and he just has that like the he's the like, drops the dog, head, he's the, like, dog uh, the dog reaction he's like ah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and she, yeah. she's just like mm, smiling at him rubbing his head I was like Silky's the best character in this show just, um, I don't know man Ruth, so, is, Ruth is pretty good Ruth is definitely is, Silky's a, female yes um, <laughs> Ruth is a dog man <laughs> uh, <Instant points. laughs> Mark uh, continuing on with the kind of topic of um, kind of this conversation with Elias and Chise so before all of that happens and then Obviously, Ruth gets petted by Silky, but mm. in order for him to find them, they kind of, he kind of runs into the Winter Child, who right. they kind of show some flashbacks of the Winter Goddess from a few episodes ago, and so she's the child of the goddess. Um, I kind of wanted to see what your thoughts were on this, because it's kind of a very simplified play on different Yule um, I guess legends, traditions in terms of how the um, winter goddess and ch- and the child play out. Right. Yeah. So that was really interesting. And I know you had brought up before um, uh, when that episode aired that you had went and looked up like the whole, uh, I guess, like the backstory be- behind that behind the goddess and I guess Freya, right? That's the name of the goddess. Yeah. yeah, It was like Uh, Frigg and Freya may be the same entity and it may have like been disambiguated at some point. Sure. Yeah. And so I thought that was interesting and I thought it was interesting how they brought them back as a a way to like, I guess to a way to let like uh, Chise and Ruth know that, you know, they, they're appreciative. Not only them, but like all the other elves that are like there in that forest, they kind of like know about their existence in a sense, and they they're willing to help them in return for you know the offerings that they give them or whatever help that they give them to, especially like all the spirits that are there. Um, so I thought that was interesting. I think that's a good a good way to to kind of not really have like this like Deus Ex, but I mean it makes sense because it was shown before in a previous episode. I think that's like a good way to incorporate that like they're bringing back this like or bringing this new character that's like a baby like or like a young child now yeah and then having them help ruth in return but it's like that mother and child duality Mm -hmm. and it's also like the duality of like the winter solstice the days are going to start becoming longer and the nights shorter so it's like the mother's like the coming of winter and night and then the child is like the sun being born this is kind of what they're pulling from pagan Yule tradition and in consequence also Christian tradition because a lot of Christmas is also tied in with, you know, ancient Yule traditions. So um, now that we're covering this kind of parent-child relationship duality, Drew, I wanted to see what your opinion is of this because I know Alec mentioned before the quote from Ruth that you know, he thought about Elias and Chise being father and daughter, and then it kind of switched to mother and son. I wanted to get your opinions on how the, these relationships kind of tie together. Well, I like talked about it um, a lot, pretty much covered what I wanted to say about it, but it's just kind of a role reversal. Whereas we see, you know, Chise gets bought and he's like nurturing and protective and then we just have all of a sudden this kind of flip, whereas she's growing and developing with her interpersonal relationships with all the different characters where he's kind of staying the same. 
it's not to say that he doesn't have any growth um, because I think he is kind of learning more about human emotions, but it's, it's not progressing as quickly as Chise's um, emotions and growth and coming of age. Uh, And so I think it was, it was good to kind of show his immaturity because it literally took her stabbing herself or beginning to stab herself in the throat before this little child of a mage would like let her go and like he doesn't understand and it's like even though you try to explain it he's like still hesitant or resistant to kind of learning these emotions even though he clearly states in previous episodes that he wants to learn more about humans and she's like um his human teacher or whatever you want to call it so it's it's kind of interesting to see that juxtaposition and that change um, because like I said, you know, we see Chise kind of growing, she's mm-hmm. friends with Stella, she's made friends with Ruth, um, with Ashley, mm-hmm. is that her name? The blonde haired girl, um, um, sorcerer. The, oh, Alice? Alice. Blonde? Or Alice, that's it. She's um, brunette. You're thinking of, uh, Ashley from, uh, the, the other show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Uh, so like she's she's developing all these relationships, and then even we see it a little bit more when she goes into London um, and you know is talking to um, the Artificer family, and we have like the nameless daughter or whatever, and then the dad who she's like meeting and like knows all about her. Um, so we we see like their relationship growing, and she, she's even like you know you got me something for Christmas, I'd like to get you something next year, and so. Her relationship are continuing to grow, continuing to blossom, whereas Elias's are like kind of static and he's resistant to change, even though apparently he says he wants to change. So I think that's important um, to kind of realize. And maybe going forward, do we see like she gets frustrated with him and leaves, even though, you know, he was protecting her and she's, you know, doesn't want that? Um, or does he end up kind of having this coming of age moment and realizing? how he's really dumb with human emotions or whatever. I mean, I think that's what he was afraid of is that Chise can, is learning more than he feels like he, he should be. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he's, he's afraid of like Chise leaving too. When he's out yeah. or she's outgrowing him, right? She's mm-hmm. very strong. Uh, she has great magical tendencies. Obviously she has like this like quote illness. She's going to die cause she's magic battery. Um, but <laughs> I think, she's like learning to cope with it and he can't accept it or won't accept it even though he says he wants to. So he's kind of hypocritical. I think it's also kind of like, uh, because we see him run off in his animal form. He's kind of going off of his instinctive nature and he's acting upon his emotions. So he doesn't really understand that he has these emotions. Mm -hmm. He's not familiar with anger or sadness Lonely, loneliness or jealousy in this case and he's kind of instinctually acting upon this and this is shown even because he runs away and then she chases after him and then after she like tries to you know calm him down and bring him back he starts strangling her and trying to consume her so like he's doing a lot of these things instinctively rather than rationally which is sort of different than we see from the normal Elias. And, well, and kinda... uh, one thing to add to that real quickly is um, in childhood development, this is known as like regression. Um, and it happens a lot like when there's big change in a child's life. So say there's like this four year old who doesn't suck their thumb and all of a sudden a new like baby brother or sister is born. And then all of a sudden the kid starts sucking his thumb again, reverting to what's comfortable to them, even though they know it's not necessarily right for them to be doing that kind of um, behavior. So it's, it's kind of like this whole regression, whereas, you know, he was developed, um, and, you know, we saw kind of his backstory and how he came into existence and how he developed into like this high class mage. And now, like you said, he's reverting and he's going back to like that primal state um, because of the situation. Yeah, like eating a, people and yeah. Being a like bitch. a coping mechanism kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Fetal that's a good position. point. Um, last thing I wanted to kind of cover on this is the appearance of Joseph, that sorcerer boy. And mm-hmm. he appears twice. So he appears 
and it looks like he does something to Stella with her family mm -hmm. and yeah. Ashen Eye silhouette appears and then later mm -hmm. he appears in front of Lindel with some poachers trying to capture some dragons. Um, let's go. And they do. With uh, who wants to talk about this? Anyone? Uh, Alec. Me? Mark <laughs> just said me. Mark, go. <laughs> no, I mean, I thought it was, I just, yeah, I was hoping that you guys saw that too. Because I definitely think it's about to go down in the next episode. Like, that's huge. I don't know what he did to Stella. You could have, you know, noticed that he had some sort of attachment to Chise. And since he already knows Chise from before and he knows, like, you know, Elias and, you know, all of the people that they're connected to, I feel like he's definitely planning something. Like, he wants to get something out of Chise and Elias. Like, he, because. I'm sure he notices, you know, that they have like this really close relationship and this really strong bond already. And just being the kind of like demented and kind of twisted person that he is, I, I can definitely see that he would want to, to do something to get, get between that or to, you know, just pull on some, some strings and try to try to cause some kind of emotion or co commotion, I should say. Kind of emotion, commotion. Emotional <laughs> commotion. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was great seeing Lindell in a kind of a different <clears throat> different eye. It was super kind of scary seeing him so serious. I wanted I want to know Ash and I's like ulterior motives. Like, oh, he's such a cool character. I I actually had a question for everyone. Okay, but this scene had an extremely funny moment for me where I just I paused and died laughing. Because they did a really good job of animating it where she gave Elias the medicine. Oh, my God. That's what she's I was like, yeah, that's open, it. open, and you see here Ruth is just like, he's like, do you, do you need want any help? Any and she just goes, Gah! and he's like, I don't know if the medicine did it or like you punching him in the throat did it. He just and I was coughs. Just, I was dying, yeah. <laughs> he coughs and they do the really crappy animation that they do for like cute moments. And he's like, huh? I what, love those what moments just happened. in this yeah. series. Oh, they're, they're the best. I love it yeah. so much. Those are great. They go into yeah. like the put them in chibi so drawing well. style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, there was one too like where uh, mm. he's like, oh, were you mad at me? And she's like, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's just like yeah. the key drawing. <laughs> they, they do it very well. They they have the same thing in the manga too. And so I'm really yeah. glad they actually incorporated it in the, uh, in the show. And they do a, a good job of keeping it and not making it seem shitty and weird. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, great discussion. I had a lot of we had a lot of good talking points there. So uh, why don't we move on to our happy hour? And first up on the deck is Violet Evergarden episode five. You write letters that bring people together. And so this one has a lot of significant flower themes again, as usual. So mm -hmm. the kind of topics I wanted to cover in this episode of Violet Evergarden are the significance of lilies, red roses, and bougainvilleas. So, um, um, is anybody familiar with, um, the kind of significance of flowers, like the flower language of lilies and red roses? Aren't, I know roses are love or red roses are love. Are, I think lilies are like youth and innocence. Um, um, in Japan, it's also girl, like young girl or lesbian girl. <laughs> <laughs> Yuri, well, yeah, this it's, isn't it's citrus. Li lilies, lilies <laughs> symbolize chastity, virtue, humility, and devotion. Um, yeah. And like it's kind of been like that theme of Charlotte, uh, who yeah. is kind of that innocent young princess who's like chasing after her first love. Um, Drew, since we're kind of on the topic of this already, what did, you, how do you think like these lilies tie into uh, the episode? I think more so than what you said, I think it sums up like immaturity, especially for the princess character. Her name is Charlotte, right? Yes. Um, yeah. It sums up like immaturity and brattiness for her. Um, and so every time she kind of sends a letter, uh, it comes back with that red rose that we kind of mentioned before. And that's like more so than love. I think it's like the coming of age and those those two coming together, the prince and uh, Charlotte. Um, she's kind of and you see her when you first meet her. She's this pouty brat. She's in her covers with all her pillows, which look really comfy. 
Um, but she's like bratty and crying and screaming and all the things that I, I hate about characters. Um, and then by the end of it, she's like this ganky bitch. who's like super happy and like getting married <laughs> and, and, you know, just super excited, um, to be, uh, in love really, you know, symbolism of the red rose. Uh, and to me more than anything, it's shocking that Violet pushed her to this because, Violet is this unemotional robot. I mean, getting better for all the things that we've talked about before, but for her to have kind of come up with the idea and say like, okay, let's cut the bullshit. Um, I'm basically pen pals with, uh, you know, my coworker. Uh, we're going to stop that shit right now. And they kind of create this narrative that like both towns sort of get, uh, start getting into like the soldiers are like, come on, bro. Like, you got to man up, tell her you love her. And then like all the girls are like, Oh my God, it's like, it's such a, it's like a romance. Like it's beautiful. All this stuff. And, uh, and for Violet to create that sort of, sort of narrative is actually incredible for the development that she's had so far. Um, so that was, that was cool. I liked, I liked seeing that. It was a good episode. I liked this episode. All right. Um, so Mark, uh, yeah. So we, Moving on with the lilies and the red roses, we do see on Charlotte's wedding day, I almost called her Lily, um, <laughs> on Charlotte's <laughs> wedding day, we see um, we see Violet saying next to um, Catelia, and obviously we knew yeah. that Catelia was the other ghost writer. And yeah. so yeah. we see a close-up of Violet holding in her hand a red rose and a lily. And so... This kind of not only is like a, you know, it doesn't only symbolize the devotion and innocence of Charlotte on her wedding day, but this also kind of describes kind of the innocence of Violet herself because she's kind of been reborn into this new character and red roses kind of symbolize, you know, deep emotion in terms of love and this is something that she's trying to understand right so how do you think this innocence and deep love emotion like symbolism ties together with violet so i think this was a good step for violet um be be, like exactly for that reason because she ended up taking both of those flowers uh and not just you know uh, charlotte or I'm, you know, I'm assuming Charlotte must have given her one of those roses or maybe she asked for one. But yeah, I think it definitely has a lot of meaning that she was holding both of them. And I think uh, Catelia, am I saying that correctly? Catelia? Yeah. Catelia? I think she, um, she makes a comment to Violet too, kind of saying something about like, <laughs> oh, it, I'm sure it's a beautiful day for a wedding. Because I feel like they're not there at the wedding, but they know like what kind of meaning the wedding has behind it. And I think that kind of has a lot of, um, I, I think it holds a lot of value to Violet too, that she helped create this kind of love. And I think Violet wants to take that with her, you know, knowing that she helped create this, this um, really strong relationship between Charlotte and uh, the prince. I forget his name. Damien. Um, D- Damien? Yes. Yes. And Damien. Um, but, and I think like she's like happy knowing that she created that relationship and she knows that like, well, this is where like this, I love you kind of started and this is how it grew. Well, now she's bringing that with her, you know, and kind of saying like, well, maybe I can figure it out from these two flowers and from this relationship that I kind of like helped bloom together. Well, Um, drawing upon what you just said, we do see Catelia. She says that and she reacts because she sees Mm -hmm. Violet. Right. Smiling. Yeah, and that's something we don't usually see out of Violet, you know, emotion. I well, know. even in the first part of the episode, she had to like pull her face up to smile. Yes, exactly. Yep. So, um, uh, last topic for this episode is we see at the end of the episode, Violet runs into Captain Deed Free Deed 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 Free Hard. Deed so freed. the translation said deed hard, but she says deed freed, which oh, kind of makes a little bit more the sense. The translation said deed hard because I read, I, I heard deed freed, and so I, that's what I typed down. Um, yeah, the, it says deed hard, but she says deed freed, which I'm going to go with deed freed. Okay, so <laughs> deed freed bougainvillea, and if you're not familiar with the bougainvillea, it's like a 
thorny vine plant that yeah. has kind Damn of showy. Pain in the ass. They have showy it leaves is. that look like flowers around their actual tiny ass flowers. So it's kind of like he's kind of like drawn as like some like pretty boy ish type character. Mm-hmm. And I kind of feel like this is kind of giving us a glimpse into his character because he shows up and is just like, hey, you're writing letters that bring people together. Do you remember Ish. that you have violently killed all of my men? And so which was badass. Yeah, they do show head. a small, small like flashback of it. Um, Drew, any thoughts on on this in particular? It's like it's like you said, you get like this kind of like thorny character, but is like beautiful and good looking. That's exactly what a bougainvillea is. I mean, it's beautiful, like pinkish purple flowers, but it's invasive. It's painful to deal with. Um, it's annoying. Uh, and so that's kind of what we, we have with this character. It's just like this beautiful exterior, but on the inside, it's like thorny and hateful and spiteful. And that's really, we got like, he got like two minutes of screen time and you're already like, oh, this is going to be a problem. (laughs) Uh, So it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a perfect name. Um, You know, they got the flower themes going. I'm all about it. Uh, But it'll be interesting to see um, how Violet solves this because throughout the show, she's kind of thrown new characters and she's able to grow and develop. But for the most part, those other characters are nurturing for the most part. Um, They're like, they're trying to help her or directly or indirectly, or they're at least nice. Whereas uh, this guy seems like he's going to be a big pain in the ass. So it'll be interesting to see with her emotional development throughout uh, what, what uh, comes about. It'll be, it'll be interesting, I think, but she's, she's dealt with them before. So, or she's dealt with um, other challenging situations before. So it'll be interesting uh, to see uh, what comes out, comes out of this. Nice. And, and, this, and is, this is the dude who, I hate to say this in this way, but gave Violet to uh, the major, right? Is it the same guy? It no, was I think the ma- that was no. her brother. Was or it? the major's it was brother. The major's brother? Because yeah. was the was the major's last name Bougainvillea? No. I don't think so. I don't think but so. I, think I thought it looked like it's same, the same dude, but it I have similar. to check it yeah, again. He had the long hair, too, but I think they're different characters. I think they, they have different voices. Bougainvillea Gilbert. That's it the is? major, right? Oh, okay. Well, then so I guess it is. it is his brother. Well, shit. All right. Well, shit. <laughs> Good catch. Um. All right. Well, let's move on from that yep. before we drone out too long. <laughs> so Flowers. We're going <laughs> to talk about the best openings and endings of the winter 2018 season of the shows that we've seen. Mm-hmm. We obviously haven't watched everything. So, Alec, let's start off with you, who hasn't talked in a while. So, uh, what weird. are what are your <laughs> top opening and endings for 2018? Um, so, my top opening, I think for me, actually, I really like the beginning to laid back camp. It's just really fun to watch. Jackson 5. Um, it's exciting. <laughs> the Jackson 5 version. Jackson 5. Say it, Jackson 5. The Jackson 5 version is awesome. I think that should have been the song to it the whole time. Um, it's pretty great. But no, I like it. I think that the I like the show a lot. It's really chill. It's fun to watch. And the opening is actually pretty fun to watch. Um, for endings... Um, Oh, I don't know. I actually really like the um, ending for March comes in like a lion. And so I don't think any of you guys have seen it, but Mm -hmm. it's 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 a good one. Oh, God, I'm getting a phone call. Ah. Okay, buzzing on my thing. Sorry. Um, (laughs) I thought you fell over. I I thought thought you fell over, too. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it was was going like (laughs) Are you, are you are you drinking the two beers or is it Mark? <laughs> oh God, I fell out of my chair. It was going like bzz, 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 like super loud. I'm like, oh God, oh God. <laughs> um. So yeah. should we just keep going? <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Speaking of okay. two beers, segue. Okay. So um, <laughs> um, um, I like the ending of of um, March comes in a like. March comes in like a lion because the ending is I like the song that's in it 
And then I like how the um, visuals kind of portray the show in in its own sort of way, I guess you would say. Um, but yeah, those would be my two. If it were last season, my best opening would be the one for Ancient, Ancient Magic Bride. Bride. I know. Yes. Yeah. It would have been mine. But opinion. not this season. Yeah, same here. I definitely <laughs> This season that is too. not as good as last season. It's not bad, but last season's was so good. Anyways. All right. Mark? Yeah. Mr. Two Bears? Um, so since Alec already said it, definitely you, you camp uh, Jackson 5 all day. Um, but since I actually really enjoy the um, A Place Further Than the Universe opening, I, I don't know why. It's really enjoyable to me. It's, it's like a lot of fun. It's really cute. And it's an, it's got like a really good animation. Like they're kind of joking around and having fun in Antarctica. I love you know it, what, man. Mark? It's good stuff. That was a that was a close second for me. Mm, yeah, as well. Close second. It's, it's a really, really good. I, and I love the way that it opens too. Like the way she's like sitting on her bed, like on her back, and then she mm-hmm. like flips over and like swings her arm around, and like the whole video just kind of like spins follows. around. Yeah, the camera yeah, follows. It's, yeah, it's really well done. I think it's cool. I um, like how so, she eats the little people in the ditch. Wow. <laughs> at the very end. Wow. At the very end, she yeah. it turns an atta- into a <laughs> and Titan. And then they actually pop up and they push her back for down. Attack on Titan is like <laughs> yeah, <it was laughs> so hyped. Oh shit. <laughs> Um, and as for ending, um, this is kind of hard. Uh, I went with, uh, Kokoku. Uh, I've been watching that. I'm about an episode behind, but I actually really like the ending to it. Uh, I'm not like huge on like Japanese, like rap, but I think this one's really well done. I think it's a really good song. It's catchy. Okay. Um, nice. Uh, Drew, what about you? So the opening that I like the most bestest is the Ryu's work mm, is never the done. Most bestest. The most bestest. Um, it's that uh, lolly oh, uh, sh- uh, shogi uh, anime. Uh, it's good. It's catchy. It's very like slice of life, happy shonen sort of style. Um, just just gets you going. It's uh, it's upbeat and it's 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 awesome. Mm-hmm. So I like that one. Um, gets the people going. My gets favorite the people going. <laughs> my uh, yeah. my favorite <laughs> ending is uh, Hataka Tonkotsu Ramens. Uh, it reminds me of like Cowboy Bebop sort of style. The visuals are kind of like that. Uh, they go through like different shades of colors, kind of like Tank for the opening of uh, Cowboy Bebop is, um, and it's like kind of jazzy. Um, and it's yeah, I I enjoy it. Uh, the one the one caveat I have with it, um, the two main characters kind of talk in it, just like their normal voices, and that's like kind of not so good. But uh, the actual music uh, is uh, excellent. The music and the visuals. So that's those are my choices, boys. Uh, nice. Right How about you, Rolando. Me, Jackson right. Five, for both. <laughs> oh, I mean. I, I really, as much as I do want to select the uh, Jackson 5 opening for Eurocamp, um, I'm going to choose something else in terms of uh, an interest of variety. So it's, <laughs> my second was kind of a tough choice. And in, in terms of choices, I was choosing between the opening for um, Koizumi Likes Ramen and the opening for uh, Takagi-san likes to tease or like is good at teasing or whatever and i think i'm gonna choose the um takagi san is good at teasing one it's kind of the the singer has got a similar voice to fauna and it's like a kind of similar like singing style and song in general that like you would normally hear fauna singing so i thought it was a good song and it's then the the, like, it's a, just about like the two kids, right? Like the, the girl, and the, the boy and the girl. Yeah. And she's just teasing him because she obviously likes him. Yeah. 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 I listened to it. It's pretty good. I'll agree. And then the ending song, um, like in a close second for the ending song was Koizumi san likes ramen. But the one I'm actually going to choose is the ending for ancient Magus bride season two, because, um, Akino from Bless and uh, fucking, I, I forgot the guy that normally sings with her. Like, they've got like really like cool voices and they're very good singing voices. And I'm familiar with them just from <clears throat> Aquarian. So 
I just like hearing those voices, I was just like, oh, fuck, it's them. And it got me kind of more hyped for the for the endings for the season for Magic Bride. So I just really liked their that singing style. It's pretty cool. When is Perfume going to do an opening or an ending? They're not going to. <laughs> Never, ever. <laughs> They're not going to do That's asking too much, Drew. Never, ever. I'm sad now. <laughs> you, you keep being sad, Drew. <laughs> you keep being um, sad. So moving on from the best openings and endings of the winter 2018 season, um, we're testing another new segment called Tentatively, What Are You Reading?, We've got some other names, but it's there's a little too much. We're going to figure out a name for this. So <laughs> as you can tell. I like, a, I like Manga Mixology, man. That's manga good. Manga Mixology? I yeah, like Mangaritaville. Like yeah, I, like, I like Mangaritaville. <laughs> Mangaritaville. <laughs> I don't know. It's just awesome. Pretty good. So, uh, um, Mark. I'm Mangaritaville. What, what have you been reading? And cheeseburger and what, what Mangaritas have you been drinking this week? <laughs> uh the margarita of the week um mm. i i have already recommended one to i think rolando which was promised neverland uh which is really really good uh but i have another one that i actually just started reading so this is kind of like falling into that isekai genre that's like becoming way too popular and it's like oversaturated right now Mm-hmm. But I actually think this one's pretty good. Um, it's uh, Mushoku Tensi. Mush- Mushoki Tensi. Um, it's about this like really nerdy kind of. Uh, I think he was a neat in his like previous life. He ends up dying and then gets reborn into this like different world as a baby. So it's like him like growing up and like he's taking like all his previous knowledge that he has like of being a neat and like a nerd and like a mm-hmm. you know huge like video game player uh and like applying it to like i guess like this world of magic so he's you know actually like learning stuff and like trying to be a better person um so it's kind of like following him like as he grows up like it it, like kind of skips a few years until he's like five then it goes to like where he's like 10 and now he's like 12 so it's kind of just like following him on like this really big adventure but i think it's really well really well done um it's a lot of fun too so definitely check it out shoki tensei Mushoki Tensei. Yeah, it's got like a way longer name, but that's what it's known for. <laughs> okay. Um, are any of you, Drew, Alec, are you reading anything? I'll be reading the new, the newest um, slime uh, installment of Ancient Magus Bride oh. when it comes out. I thought you were going to say the slime, the, the slime one. manga. Well, I'm oh, going to read that good. too. I are like reading that one too. Manga. Yeah, I read the first book and then I I didn't read anything after, but I I like it. It's oh, that one's a really cool. good one too. I was gonna yeah. say that one, but I, I had read that one. Like it's been caught up uh, according to like the latest scans for like two months now, so I haven't read any latest. How chapters. many how many chapters are there or books? I should say, I guess. Uh, in English or what? Yeah, just like uh, <laughs> that I can get and read because I don't read Japanese. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I mean, I read I read everything English like what? Because <laughs> like, I don't no, know if he and, reads can like I, just can I get him in French, Does he read it in Japanese? I don't know. Can I get him in French? I actually, no, no, no. I taught myself. I taught myself Japanese last I'm week. It was real read. easy. I mean, like yeah, I don't know if he fast. reads like the English published books, like the actual legal ones, or if he like is reading like online. You know. Is it? I, I'm totally just reading off of like manga decks now, which is like right. the newest so, thing. So what's out that is like you know that I can uh, read? I think <laughs> there are. Hold on, give me one second. I'll pull up in, my English, <laughs> in English, <laughs> in English, <laughs> in English, in English, please. I don't. I don't read any other languages. There are 35 so chapters. Okay. So yeah, I'm not caught up, but I liked the first. It's probably like three or four I books. Don't know. Yeah. I liked I liked the beginning, so. All right, it was cool. Well, uh, Drew, are you reading anything? Um, so you I am, well, I can't read. I'm looking at the pictures <laughs> of. Uh, <laughs> of uh, Why did you ask that? <laughs> uh, I'm making looking, me feel bad. <laughs> I'm looking at the pictures of uh, Shokugeki no Soma. Um, I started from the beginning, so I'm like catching up on that. But before that, the last thing that I read was a uh, Nisekoi, and I hated it. So <laughs> there's that. 
You hated you it. You didn't like the pictures of Nisekoi? Well, I liked the pictures for a long time, and then all the pictures started becoming the same thing week after week, and so I'm like, I'm sick of looking at these <clears throat> pictures. I don't even want to color them anymore, so I dropped it. Okay. <laughs> Did you manage to color in the lines by the end of it? It was really hard, dude. Oh, it man. wasn't etchy enough. That's yeah. probably why. <laughs> But uh, it's pretty. The pictures in uh, Shokugeki are pretty etchy, so I like I like uh, coloring those. Did, nice. <laughs> did yeah. you did you read the one shot Nikuni? for Nisekoi though? Which one? The the one shot for it. So before the actual serialized manga came out. Oh yeah, and it's so bad. Yeah, it's it's terrible. It's like <clears throat> midnight, and there's like a bell tower, and she pushes him off the bell tower. This is not what actually happens. But that's what I wanted to happen, uh, and then and then and then, the, and then the show would have been over, and I wouldn't have had to go through all this. The one shot was actually like okay, in my opinion. Uh, I didn't I, continue I read with. It, I read it after uh, watching the uh, like entirety of the fr- like the first season, and so I thought it was really weird. Um, that's probably uh, why I didn't like it, but I, I, mean, I think the- if I would have read it like normally, it would have been fine. It's like a West Side Story, Romeo and Juliet sort of deal. Like the reason why I watched Nisekoi was because I had read the one shot and then started reading the manga. But then as everything started to drone out and become an endless an endless yeah. harem, I was just like, All right, Ooh, well, yeah. I'm gonna stop endless reading harem. this. Yeah, yeah. That's how I felt too. It was I know great. Mark season one was great. Mark didn't uh didn't like Nisekoi at all. I did not I could not stand I, it. And I don't blame you. I mean Yeah. All right. No, definitely not my cup of tea. Ooh, Nothing you else like you're looking at, Drew? No other pictures you're looking at? I can't, I can't read, dude. It's hard. <laughs> I Let's didn't say read. I just read. said look at pictures. <laughs> it's it makes hard, him feel dude. bad when he's like, God, what is this jumble of just stuff on this page? English, Japanese, pictures. it doesn't matter. It's just. I it's wish like, I knew what they were saying. It's all pictures. <laughs> yeah, he, he just wishes he could read all of it. Well, um, you see, the reason he can't read is because Drew prescribes to the idea that a picture is worth a thousand words. That's right. Clearly, that is not true because he can't read. Yeah. Or he'd know a thousand words from all the pictures he's seen. Well, it's hard, guys. Yeah. It's hard out there. Remember, are, are remember me. Send anything, donations. Rwanda? Send donations. <laughs> so let's, um, get, let's get Drew Reading Club. Don't do that. Don't waste your money. <laughs> um, mo- moving, moving on from the Drews not being able to read. Um, I'm currently still reading Tomo Chan wa Onanoko, and that's a pretty easy read. It's like one chapter a day. Now you're just making or not, fun of not me. even one chapter. It's like one page uh-huh. a day. You're making fun of yourself. That's pretty easy right? read. Um, and then I'm Those still reading. Great. Um, Kaguya wants to be confessed to. It's a pretty funny comedy that I hope at some point gets turned into an anime. There was like a rumor Jersey? about it. No, I really? think sometime this year or last oh, year. Oh, rumor yeah, has people it? Were, people were talking about it and saying that there should be a, an anime for it. Because it's like, I feel it? like it's pretty, it's pretty popular, it's, isn't it? It's really popular. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Like, but, like I even like can kind of see certain like voice actors and actresses playing like certain characters in it it's got it's got like the kind of comedy that hasn't we haven't had like a similar type of comedy to it in recent anime seasons i don't know if you've been reading uh, i I mean definitely not like the same genre or anything but like suradura children is like kind of like one like short like comedy that it is isn't it for am i for something totally different. Kaguya wants to be confessed to. Yeah. No, Kaguya wants to be confessed to is sort of like a. Um, it's not. It's like kind of like the one room, uh, student council type, but it's also just like exaggerated comedy, kind of like defrag. Mm. If I don't okay, know if then maybe I'm thinking of something else. Then I don't know. I'll have to check it out then. Because it, it is really popular. Like I see it everywhere and it's it's always ranked really highly. Yeah. Like the, the first few chapters, you'll be like, what the fuck? Why is it a lot of the story repeating or not repeating, but like a lot of elements are repeated. Like they keep talking about the how it's a battle, blah, 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 like introducing it. Essentially, it's because it essentially changed serialization partway through. And so they had to introduce it to a new audience part 
partway mm-hmm. through the story. Um, so I like it. If anyone else is interested in a comedy to read, I would definitely recommend it. And uh, yeah, so that's it for Manga Ritaville, as uh, we may be calling it. Yeah. And or we could talk about One Piece. <laughs> I know that if anybody wants to talk about One Piece, I'm always there. No. Yeah. <laughs> I love One Piece. So um, closing up, we'll um, close up the show with a couple bits of news. So one, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite not going to be at Evo 2018. <laughs> and do you know what anime's taking over? What anime, Drew? Anime, Dragon Ball Z, Fighter Z, Guilty Gear, Exerd, Second Thousand, Revelation, Let's Go, Anime, Weeb's taking over Evo. Is it Dragon Ball Z, Fighter Z, or Dragon Ball Fighter <laughs> Dragon Z? Ball Fighter Z. <laughs> Dragon yeah, that's what Z, I thought. Z. Z, 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 Z. <laughs> you can just add Z's, Z's wherever you want. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like Z's. when people say ATM machine. Oh, eight, an, an automated teller machine machine? Yeah. Nice, dude. That's sick. Yeah, that dude, sounds why don't awesome. You, why don't Machine, you KYS machine. yourself. Yeah, KYS yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you can't say that. You can't say that. <laughs> yeah, you can't say that. Um, no, we've got some upcoming uh, AOD shots. Uh, Mark and I just <laughs> finished recording a Violet Evergarden shot. There will be more of those coming. We'll be kind of keeping Boss. the one-on-one style. So uh, look out for those. I'll be having a different person per shot. And then, Alec, I think you're planning on doing Magus Bride shots still? Yeah, and then that's just going to stay Rolando and I, and then we're going to keep oh. the four-person content in the main podcast because uh, I don't want to come up with topics for three different episodes. <laughs> okay. Fair I'm well. lazy. Fair. <laughs> so um, last bit of news is we're considering a new sort of segment for the show. Um, where we watch an older series and discuss one or two episodes of it every week. And the series we may be considering is Monogatari, since yeah, Drew likes to talk about it so much. let's go. Um, <laughs> oh, head turns, man. But um, turns. I just wanted to point out some of the names I was thinking up for it. So we've got Libation 2.0, You Cannot Rewatch. Um, That's my favorite. Don't Call It Old Fashioned. And uh, My Little Series Can't Be This Revived. So um, that one's also good. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, we'll 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 take a vote and see which one ends up sticking. If Should you have any suggestions, on, like, throw uh, it out there. Yeah, we can throw a vote on <laughs> social medias. They yeah, do that. The, social the media. Yeah, Mr. Social Media. Mr. Um, social manager. Media. You can, now yeah, that we have we, a social media can, manager, mm. we can do things like that. Mm. that yeah, that we, sounds like jumping, a really good idea. We've been idea. jumping up in the followers mm. on Instagram. And Let's we'll throw this one to Twitch. our social media manager and see what they think about it and then see what see what we end up doing, you know? Yeah. Now yeah, that we have the one. Behind the scenes. Yeah, behind the scenes. With the degree. Yeah, he's got a degree in social media. It's lit. We pay him nothing. Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah, I pay myself. He just wants beer. He I mean, just he wants pays exposure. Himself he pays himself. He just wants exposure. <laughs> um well uh closing up. <laughs> closing up, we um have our <laughs> WordPress, anime on draft.wordpress.com. You can find everything, all of our links to our social mm-hmm. media, our YouTube, SoundCloud, and you can subscribe to our iTunes there if you so wish to subscribe to our podcast that way. And then do it. Do it. our Twitter is at MMA on draft. You can literally tweet us anything you want. Mark will respond to you because that's yeah. his job and he pays himself for it. It is his job. He pays himself in beer. He does. Yes. And uh, so if you want to search for us manually, instead of going to our WordPress on SoundCloud, iTunes and YouTube, we are anime on draft. So this has been episode yeah, 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 41. Yeah. What did you guys think? Great. Good stuff. Mm. I'm good at coloring. Two and a, two and a half beers. Okay, Drew's good at coloring. Right. Good pictures. Wow. Wow. I know the. I know what happened in this anime now. Nice this manga. Nice. Yeah. We, in case you, in case you weren't familiar with it, Drew colored. Um, what was that one? Um, shitty anime that was in Shirobako. The one with the, the shitty coloring in it. Yeah, that was the one. That, that was Drew. Me. That was that Drew. was me. They paid me for it. <laughs> yeah, they paid him for it. But he's not quite. He's not quite at adult coloring books yet. 
Still yeah. working his way there, guys. That's why they had to pick. They had Be to pick supportive. someone with a low budget. So yeah, send, send donations. <laughs> we need. I or I need. Don't all waste your money. Don't waste your money. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that's anime on draft. Signing off. Bye. Bye.